The first step is to tape your vellum to the very center of the board, also known as the platen. After your vellum is center, you can begin to center your screen to the vellum. Notice that you have to move the platen up and down, the screen around, loosen things up to get the screen to match the board. One thing you don't ever want to do is move the vellum that you've already taped to the board. Keep that there. Keep adjusting until your screen is directly on top of your vellum and you don't see any of that white space. You can adjust the arms to move from left to right if you need to move your screen over to the left a little or over to the right a little bit just by adjusting that black knob. You can also move the board up and down. You just don't want to untape your vellum. Keep in mind that up until this point, the screen has been loose within those arms the entire time while you're adjusting the placement. If you are doing a multicolor screen print, you might have one or maybe two more screens. If you are doing this, you will have to do this exact same process I just laid out to each screen using the exact same platen. You won't move your vellum. You will just keep adjusting each screen until it matches the vellum perfectly without any of that white space. However, if you're just doing a one color, then you can ignore this part for now. Whether one color or two color, you do need to tape off the edges of every screen. So that way ink does not go through the mesh on the outside of the emulsion. I have found that the best way to apply the tape is to measure and then cut it and attach it to the side of the screen like I just did in that video, then pick up the whole piece and lay it out on the screen. I have a lot of students who try to keep the tape on the roll and apply it while it's still on the roll and then cut it once they've stuck it down. And honestly, that just makes a lot of kinks in the tape and you want it to be smooth. Now you're ready to apply your ink underneath of the design. You're more than welcome to do a test print on paper, just tape the paper down. Otherwise, you're gonna move on to putting your shirt on the platen. You're gonna spray the board with spray adhesive to make sure that the shirt sticks to the board. And then you're gonna put the shirt on just like the platen is a person. And that little round top is the neck. Your goal is to get that shirt as center as possible. Once you do, you can go ahead and flatten it out and smooth the shirt out to make sure there's no wrinkles. You also need to be mindful of how high up the design is printing on the shirt. You don't want to print on the collar. You don't want to print on the belly. So you can kind of bend down and look at where it's going to print at. And from there, you can always adjust the platen, the board, and move the shirt up and down. Here's those knobs again to where you can move the board up and down. You want the design to be about two to three inches from the collar. Okay, so you are ready to go ahead and print your design. Just spread the ink out, make sure it's covering the design completely, and it's the length of the squeegee. If you don't have ink all the way across the squeegee, it'll stick. That is the flood stroke. You're gonna cover the design with ink. Then you're ready for the print stroke, which is pushing away from yourself 
twice, really hard, lots of pressure, using the corner edge of the squeegee to push through the mesh. Here you can see I'm doing a couple extra flooding and printing just to really make sure I'm getting that ink through the design. This is a solid print. I would not reprint this, but if you did not get it completely solid, you're more than welcome to push the screen back down. Everything's locked in place, so when you push that screen back down, it's going to line up directly with that same print you just printed. If you're doing a two color, you're going to have to heat up the first print before you print the second one. Only if you're doing this on a shirt, not if you're doing it on paper. But to do so, you're going to use this portable dryer and you'll have to plug this in. Pull down until you hear the clicking sound and then it will stay. Make sure you turn the knob so the light comes on. I like to keep it on high. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute of the heat being on the shirt, but go ahead and tap it just to make sure that it's completely dry. Also, you don't wanna leave it on too long, otherwise it will burn the shirt. To let the cord go back up, you just pull down until you don't hear the clicking sound and then release it. Now you're ready to print your second color if you're doing a multicolor. You're gonna do that the same way you did the first one, and you're doing it right on top of the shirt, right on top of the first print. Because we use water-based ink, you're going to have to heat set your shirt in order for the design to stay when you wash it. So before you clean up, I would just go over to the heat setting machine and first make sure that it's plugged in. Step one of cleanup is carting off all of the ink off the squeegee, off the board, and putting it back into the container. Try to conserve as much ink as possible. We like to save this, not waste it. As soon as you're done with a tool for cleanup, go straight over to the washout station, rinse it, and put it back right away. Don't ever just leave these sitting around or lying in the sink because I promise you at some point you will forget them. Always be sure to scrape the ink off of this side of the squeegee and rinse the ink off as well. A lot of times people leave ink on there and then it will dry. So don't forget that that is a square shape and there's the like front and back sides but also the tip of it always return every item back to where it goes make sure you return it clean and put back properly once your screen is clean of ink you can rip the tape off and throw the tape away And then give your screen a decent rinse with the overhead sprayer, mostly getting the ink out of the mesh area. Don't use the power washer, the ink will come back and spray all of your clothes. Place the clean screen in front of the dip tank. Once the ink on your shirt is dry, you're ready to heat set it. Make sure that the settings read at least 350 and for 16 seconds. You can set your shirt on top of the board and then use the handle to swivel that top piece over on top of the design. Pull the handle down. And then pull the handle up and take your shirt out. Hey guys, thanks for watching my demo video. Um, a couple of things I want to go over specifically with screen printing and cleanup that um, could go wrong potentially while you're printing and mess up your shirt um, that I didn't mention in the video. I'm, I'm gonna go over that now. So the first thing I want to reiterate is how important setup is. If you do not set up your screen properly, things are just going to go completely wrong. So like that being alignment and making sure that your vellum is centered to the board 
making sure that you center your screen to the board, making sure that you tighten the screen into place, and then making sure that your shirt, when you, when you put your shirt on, that's centered too. And it's printing like in this area. Um, one thing that people do, well, two things they do wrong in alignment is one, like one of those things is off. And so your print's gonna get off center of the shirt somehow because one of those things along those line is not centered to the board. And then another thing that can go wrong a lot of the time is that people don't tighten the platen underneath the platen. And so when you go to print, it kind of pushes the platen um, and you'll get a double print. So you'll get like a print here and a print here. Um, and that does not look good. Every now and then it can look cool, but like don't go for that. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is when you're actually printing. So I didn't really talk about how hard you actually have to push through with the squeegee when you're printing. You have to use the corner edge of the squeegee and like get on your tiptoes, put your body weight into it, push really hard so that ink goes through the mesh. Um, if you don't push hard enough and you pull your screen up, you're gonna see one of two things. One, it's not gonna print very well and you're gonna have to do that again. That's minor and then you just keep printing. But one thing that's really bad is if you don't push hard enough or there's ink left in the mesh and you didn't get that through, on your shirt, the ink's gonna look super thick and you don't wanna leave it like that. If you leave that ink thick, it's gonna wash off in the wash, it's never gonna heat set. Um, but you gotta be careful when you print that the second time, you have got to get it through because if your ink is thick, it's gonna like push through under the screen and glide onto the shirt. It's called a bleed. And so where your design is, it'll like be thick there and bleed out further to where you want it to be. So pushing hard with the squeegee is really important. And if you feel that you're not getting that at any point, um, have the teacher come over and push it through or have another student who you know is strong enough to push it through, give it like a push through. Um, Okay, clean up, super important. Please don't leave anything out, even trash. I always get people leave little pieces of tape out and little pieces of paper towels out. So please don't leave any of that out. And then the other thing I didn't really mention, one, make sure you unplug the portable dryer, but also make sure you unplug the heat set machine when you're done with it. Sometimes that gets leave left on overnight, um, which isn't good. So just make sure you do that. And good luck with your printing.